Let's continue talking about optimization of vectorization. In Intel Xeon processors, as well as Intel Xeon FICO processors, an important consideration for efficient vectorization is data alignment. The definition of alignment is this. A memory address is aligned to an n byte boundary if this address is a multiple of n. Alignment is especially important for vectorization, because when you load data from memory into a vector register, some instruction sets require that you load from an aligned memory address. For example, for legacy 128-bit SSE instructions, you have to have 16-byte alignment for loads and stores. For modern Xeon processors with 256-bit AVX instructions, alignment requirements are relaxed, but 32-byte alignment may be favorable. For the first-generation Xeon FICO processors with 512-bit IMCI instructions, you must have your data aligned to a 64-byte boundary to load it into vector registers. Second-generation Xeon Phi, Knight's Landing, will have relaxed alignment requirements. However, alignment may be important for some operations other than vectorization. For example, to offload two Xeon Phi coprocessors, it is beneficial to align offloaded arrays to a 4 kilobyte boundary for the most efficient utilization of direct memory access. How do you create arrays that begin on aligned boundaries? If you need an aligned stack array, you can use the qualifier attribute aligned. For example, this line creates an array A of size n elements and guarantees that this array begins on a 64-byte aligned boundary. Such an array will be useful in vector calculations. If you need an aligned array on the heap, you can use a special memory allocator, a memmalloc. It takes two arguments, the size of the required array and the required alignment value in bytes. Arrays allocated with mmalloc must be deallocated with a special deallocator mm3. Even though alignment is useful for vectorization, it doesn't mean that you need to try to align every variable in your program. For instance, scalars can live happily at memory addresses that have natural alignment, which is when alignment value is equal to the data size. When you need alignment in multidimensional arrays, you have to take extra measures in addition to using special allocators. Specifically, you need to make sure that the size of the inner dimension in your multidimensional array is a multiple of aligned value, for example 64 bytes. Consider this example. We have a matrix of size m by n stored in a row major format and we have two loops, one in i traversing the rows and the other in j traversing the columns. If we want 64-byte alignment access in the inner vector loop, we have to make sure that for any value of i, the data for j equals 0 is aligned. We can use mmalloc to allocate the matrix and it will guarantee that for i equals 0, calculations in the loop begins on a 64-byte aligned boundary. However, what if the length of each row is not a multiple of 64 bytes? 64 bytes holds 16 single precision floating point elements. So, another way to think of it, what if m is not multiple of 16? For example, m equals 50, then for i equals 1, matrix element j equals 0 will be offset by 50 minus 3 multiplied by 16, meaning 2 elements, or 2 multiplied by 4 equals 8 bytes from an aligned boundary. Obviously, in this case, we cannot have aligned data loads in every iteration in i. However, there is a common way to solve this situation by padding the size of the inner dimension. To pad the inner dimension, we should replace the value of m with a value slightly greater than m, which is also a multiple of 16. This will create some padding at the end of each row. We will never use the data in this padding, but it will guarantee that for any value of i, the row begins on a 64-byte aligned boundary. When we have such guarantee of alignment, we can give the compiler hints about it using pragma vector aligned. What this does is it tells the compiler not to check for alignment at the beginning of loops. The resulting code will work slightly faster, but it will break if we somehow forget to provide good alignment. That is all about the alignment for now. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below the video. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you in the next episode.